Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. You probably know by now how much I love spiralizing and sneaking more veggies into your diet. Well, today I'm gonna to show you a whole new way that you can do that using this amazing sheet cutter attachment from KitchenAid. Now, a little backstory on this product is that I actually played around with the prototype and demoed it for KitchenAid at the Housewares convention last year. We shot a quick little video in the booth, put it up on social media, and it went crazy viral to about 4 million views. So needless to say, I think you guys love this product as much as I do, and I'm thrilled to partner with KitchenAid on today's video. So in today's video, I'll show you a variety of vegetables that you can cut, but because this product is so new and there's nothing else like it on the market, I also wanna give you a few recipe ideas. But I'm sure that your brains will be buzzing with recipe ideas as well, and how you can transform traditional recipes into healthier gluten-free alternatives. And I would love to hear those ideas in the comments below. So without further ado, let's dive in. The vegetable sheet cutter comes in its own storage box, and this is great as it helps to keep all of the pieces together. Now, you may not know this as I didn't know this until recently, but KitchenAid attachments will fit all KitchenAid stand mixers no matter the size, and even going back 50 or 60 plus years, which is pretty cool. The sheet cutter comes with two blades, both a thin and a thick blade, and it just drops right on top and has a magnetic feel to it, which secures it. But before we add the blade, it's easier if I just show you by slicing up this apple. So you'll add a food holder into each end of soft fruits and vegetables like apples, pears, zucchini, and cucumber, and you'll line up the red arrows on each end. Then you'll pull the lever back, attach your fruit or vegetable with a little twist, insert the skewer through the end, and drop in whichever blade you'd like to use. Turn your stand mixer on stir or speed two, release the lever, and let the sheet cutter work its magic. When you're done, turn the stand mixer off, remove the blade, and untwist the apple. All right, so now you're probably wondering what to do with this super long sheet of apple, right? Well, I love to make wraps, and I call this my California apple wrap. I'll layer a slice of turkey, some avocado and arugula, and a sprinkle of goat cheese, then wrap it up. It's simple but amazingly flavorful, and I guarantee you that your friends and family will be coming back for seconds. For the kids, you could do a take on PB&J, but in this version, I'm using my homemade almond butter and homemade blueberry chia seed jam. And if you're interested, I have videos for both of these on my channel. All right, let's slice up a zucchini now. For larger fruits and vegetables, you'll need to slice them down to about a four and a half inch length. Add the food holders into both ends, and because this is a soft vegetable, push the skewer all the way through. Then turn on your stand mixer and create sheets of zucchini. I also want to mention that while there's a large core that's left, it's definitely not going to waste. And I'll show you what you can do with these cores at the end of the video. With the zucchini, we'll start by making another wrap, and this one is vegan. Now, the bonus of using zucchini for wraps is that it won't oxidize like the apple will. So you could definitely make these ahead of time and then serve them as appetizers or at a party. So I'll layer some of my homemade hummus, grated carrots, a little spinach, a slice of avocado, because I'm from California and we pretty much put avocado in everything, and top it with some microgreens. And that's it for a fast, healthy, and veggie-packed wrap. Now, because I love zucchini so much, let me show you something else that you can make, and that's my zucchini lasagna. Add some tomato sauce to a casserole dish and layer in two sheets of zucchini. Top that with a bolognese sauce, and the key here is to keep it thick. Because zucchini will release water as it cooks, you don't want a watery tomato or marinara sauce, or else you'll end up with a watery zucchini lasagna. On top of the meat, I'll add my ricotta mix, which is a blend of ricotta, an egg, freshly grated Parmesan, and black pepper. Then sprinkle some fresh parsley and basil and top that with a handful of mozzarella. 
Repeat those layers one more time and finish it off with two slices of zucchini and some extra cheese before baking it in the oven. Another soft vegetable I cut frequently is cucumber. You can make wraps with cucumber similar to the others, but one thing I love to make with cucumber is spicy tuna sushi rolls. All you have to do is fill them with the ingredients that you love, then cut them into smaller bite-sized rolls. Moving on to harder vegetables, let's sheet cut a sweet potato. You'll only need to insert one food holder because it's so firm and then insert the skewer straight into the potato. With these long sheets of sweet potato, the casserole ideas are endless and I've made a delicious vegetarian lasagna with sheets of sweet potato. But today I wanna show you a snack option and that's homemade sweet potato chips. The great thing about using the sheet cutter is that all your chips will be the same thickness, which means that they'll cook evenly. I cut them into these rectangular shapes, then brush them with a little olive oil and sprinkle with sea salt. They'll bake low and slow for about two hours, but when they're done, you'll have perfectly crispy sweet potato chips. This next recipe may be my absolute favorite though, and it starts with russet potatoes. Because who needs tortillas when you can cut sheets of russet potatoes? And we'll process this potato the same as our sweet potato. When you're done, cut the long sheet into about seven inch pieces, and you should get quite a few pieces out of a regular sized russet potato. In a mixing bowl, I have shredded chicken, cheddar cheese, sour cream, and diced green chilies. To that, I'm adding green verde sauce, a little black pepper, and sauteed garlic and onions, and then just stirring it all together. In a casserole dish, add a little verde sauce on the bottom, then dollop the chicken mixture onto the potato slices, roll them up, and add them to the casserole dish. Repeat this process until all of your chicken mixture is used up. Top the chicken enchiladas with more verde sauce, freshly chopped cilantro, and more cheddar cheese. Then bake them in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. Before serving, I top the enchiladas with thin slices of red onion, sliced jalapeno, and more cilantro. And I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that these chicken enchiladas verde are pretty much the most delicious thing ever. All right, I promised I'd show you what you can do with those leftover cores, so here's what I do. I'll place my slicer shredder attachment onto my stand mixer and use the small grating blade. The great thing about this attachment is that it has two widths on the chute, so the small cores fit perfectly in the middle and stay upright, and the larger pieces fit as well. Once it's all grated up, I'll make a delicious zucchini or potato fritter. And good news, there's a recipe for that on my website, which I'll link to in the description box below. So there you have it, the amazing vegetable sheet cutter that I'm obviously obsessed with and I think you will be too. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss next week's video.